morning, and welcome to the online worship service of the Lighthouse Methodist Church, where we continue to receive the light, be the light, and share the light of Jesus Christ. We're delighted you're joining us for this online worship service, and we hope those who are at their summer residence are joining us as well. As COVID cases continue at a high level in Florida, we will continue to worship online until such time we can safely reopen and we will be following directives from the conference. The changes to our daily lives caused by the virus have gone on longer than many of us would have thought. However, we hope you continue to feel connected to our church family as we worship online each week. Please continue to pay special attention to the newsletter that is emailed each week as it contains information regarding church news and mission outreach. Since we have members of the congregation spread over different time zones, I want to remind everyone that the weekly service can be viewed anytime using YouTube. Also, please check the subscription option and you will also get access to other videos being sent out by the church. Finally, a reminder to continue to give your tithes and offering. The offering supports the financial obligation of the church and its many missions. Thank you so much as we continue the ministry of the Lighthouse Church. That concludes the announcement portion of the service. Wherever you are, we hope you are safe and healthy. And now please prepare your heart and mind for the worship service.
God loves you and so do I. Hear these words from Matthew chapter 15. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. A boy left the familiar, comfortable territory of children's church to sit in big church with his mother. It was a communion Sunday at St. Luke's, and Mom had been struggling to keep her son settled during the service. So when the time came to get up and walk the aisle, kneel at the altar, and receive the bread and cup, the boy was excited to finally be able to move around. They approached the kneeling rail, kneeled, and patiently waited to be served. Reverently and quietly, the ministers walked the rail, placing a pinch of Hawaiian bread in the hands of the communicants and carefully raising and lowering the tray of cups for persons to receive their small cup of wine. The mother received the elements, and as she was praying, silently, she heard the boy stand up. She looked at him. He had stood up, reached out, and grabbed a large hunk of the bread and was snickering and laughing. She pulled him down forcefully from the shoulder and reprimanded him in that loud mother's whisper voice. She said, you shouldn't have done that. The boy in his normal children's church voice asked, why? There's plenty of that bread to go around. Have you ever thought about the crumbs under the table? In today's passage, Jesus leaves the familiar, comfortable territory he was accustomed to, to travel north. And it was sort of a red light district, a place where most people would not dare to go. And going there for Jesus, a Jew, is socially unacceptable. It's where the so-called outcasts and unclean, undesirables live. But it is here that we find that an outsider finds a place on the inside of the heart of God. Tyre and Sidon were prosperous port cities in ancient Israel. And they are now located in Lebanon. These cities are mentioned throughout the Old and New Testaments. Early in the New Testament, in the Gospel of Mark and Luke, the cities are mentioned. It is written here that people from these cities heard about this Jesus, and they left the city to go find him so that they could be healed. And later in Jesus' ministry, in the text we heard today, Jesus has visited this socially unacceptable region. These two port cities were regions for the Gentiles. And one of these socially unacceptable persons, a woman, no less, approaches Jesus. 
Now, being both a Canaanite and a woman is quite a double whammy in this day. But this woman had a daughter who was being tormented. And torment, well, it can be experienced by anyone, no matter who you are or where you are from. And Jesus is now in the neighborhood. Will he help her? This woman goes to great lengths because what mother would not want her daughter to be healed and set free? This persistent and bold woman goes against cultural norms in pursuit of receiving healing for her child. She speaks up and out to this man that she calls the son of David. She longs for his mercy. She doesn't know what he will do, yet she persists and takes a risk. At first, Jesus doesn't respond. Jesus is silent. This is not what she wanted to experience. She, a mother grieving over her daughter's torment? And the disciples, well, they weren't that hospitable to her. They wanted her to just go away. To them, she didn't exist. She's foreign, and they've had a long day. They don't have concern for her kind. They want to build a wall around themselves and act like she isn't there. I'm not sure of the totality of what is going on here. But at first, Jesus doesn't sound very compassionate either. I do know there is a cultural difference. Jews and Gentiles. And Jesus is both God and and human, a human born into this world, and at this point, a somewhat closed religious system whose priority was to find the lost sheep of Israel. But as we see throughout the Gospels, this woman is persistent. She doesn't give up easily. She'd heard the stories of the son of David's preaching and healing mission. And she presses up against Jesus' resistance. And one could say that as an outsider, a foreign woman, she is used to pressing up against resistance. She knows that there are cultural norms that may prohibit her getting what she needs. But she continues to speak up and speak out. It seems she isn't willing to be seen and known than anything less than human. A human being created in God's image who needs help. She pushes on saying to Jesus, Lord, help me. Yes, she's a human being in need like any other human being. She's like us. She's gone from calling Jesus Son of David to calling Him Lord. She's making a profession of faith in real time. Can God work in this unacceptable place? Well, Jesus was slow in his empathy towards her. I don't know why, and the text doesn't tell us why. He even insults the woman calling her a dog. It was common slang among Jews to call Gentiles dogs, but that doesn't make it right. Maybe Jesus was trying to make a point to his disciples. I'm not sure. And when Jesus says to her, it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs, she replies, yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. 
You see, she needed something. Even a crumb would suffice. She knew that there was enough grace to heal her daughter and a crumb from God's table than from a feast from sinners. One might say her sass, her persistence and drive saved her. I tend to think that something happened in Jesus that day. God's love in the humanity of Jesus was deepened and widened in an unacceptable city from a Gentile woman. She speaks the truth and she pleads. I can imagine the eyes of Jesus getting wide, the woman seeing the depth of the love and mercy of God, knowing that there was enough to go around, enough love, enough healing, enough mercy. This truth opened the door to the freedom of her daughter. Jesus says that her faith is great, and in an instant, her daughter is delivered from a distance. It's like the little boy kneeling at the communion rail, reaching up and grabbing a hunk of that Hawaiian bread. That's the unlimitless grace of God. This no-named woman shows how a person can be bold and brave in approaching God with persistence and doing it without fear. No matter what we hear or experience, God's answer to us is always to show mercy. This woman has her eyes on her daughter's healing and nothing can deter her. Not disciples and not strange lines from Jesus because she had a good case. She had faith and all of society strikes against her and marks upon her. Do not limit her faith nor her tenacity to reach beyond existential borders. Silence is not an option for her. Only salvation and healing. She believes, no matter what people say, that her daughter can be changed, delivered, and healed. Her daughter was a human being, too. I'm grateful that Jesus gives in with God's healing to this foreigner and embodies God's mercy for all people. Maybe that is the lesson Jesus was teaching. Perhaps he's playing his disciples, showing them that in the end, it is always God's nature to extend mercy. After all, the woman was not a dog. She was a human. She had feelings and needs and a child. And through this encounter, we can see, even if the disciples did not, that we are all more alike than we are different. We are all children of God. Throughout the ministry of Jesus, he engages Pharisees, Gentiles, Canaanite and Samaritan women, droves of children, revealing the reality that it is the heart of God to include all people, including foreigners and outcasts. We are reminded of Galatians 3.28. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor there is male and female, you are all one in Christ Jesus. God, as revealed in the New Testament, is a God of all. And those we despise, well, actually they are our sisters and brothers too. We may want to send them away, but God brings them near to us. 
even to the master's table. Crumbs are enough for the Canaanite. It may not be what everyone else receives, but she is grateful for a little piece of the healing bread of life. Because in the brokenness of that little crumb of grace, her daughter is healed. Her child's nightmare ends. And it does end because the Lord has mercy on her. The Apostle Paul says in the assigned epistle lesson today that God is merciful to all. I guess there is plenty of grace to go around. The little boy knew it at the altar. He was persistent, reaching out, taking and receiving the body of Christ, leaving his mother embarrassed and the ministers smiling. This text brings to mind the new Colossus, the sonnet by Emma Lazarus inscribed on a plaque on the inner wall of the pedestal of the Statue of Liberty. The mother of exiles, from her beacon hand, glows the worldwide welcome. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Though Emma was Jewish, this sonnet inspired Rose Hawthorne Lathrop, daughter of Nathaniel Hawthorne, to form the Dominican Sisters of Hawthorne in 1908. It reads, From her beacon hand glows the worldwide welcome. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled massings yearning to breathe free the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Jesus would say, yes, even bring me those you consider dogs. I've proven myself that I will listen and I will heal them. Send me everyone that yearns to be free, for I am the way and the truth and the life. I have come to bring release to the captives and sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to set the captive free. There are crumbs under my table that will free you just as if you would take a wholesome bite off the loaf of the bread of life. And as the Apostle Paul has asked, has God rejected his people? Absolutely not. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. I invite you to join me as you're seated in affirming our faith in the words of the modern affirmation. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. I believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit 
as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. Morning to my Lighthouse Church brothers and sisters from here in Chelsea, Michigan. As we begin our time of prayer, know that Chris and I send you our warmest greetings. We're both well and we wish you the same. And now, let us enter into our time of prayer with our Heavenly Father. Lord, we're so grateful that your grace extends to all people, your love knows no boundaries. May we, like the Gentile woman in today's gospel text, be persistent seekers of your grace. In our world of a continuing pandemic from COVID-19, the inability to worship together in person, the unrest in many of our cities and in this season of political division, help us to cling to your grace. Father, may we also extend your grace to others we lift those in our fellowship in need of continuing prayer. We lift Richard Klepser to you, that you would continue to bring healing to his body. Thank you for what you've already done. And may you bring strength for his wife, Diane. We lift up John Peterson to you. May you strengthen his spine and bring him relief from pain. We lift, lift John Mitchell to you as well, that you would be bring complete healing of the hematoma in his brain. We lift up Todd to you and Treat's nephew. 
who is also in need of healing. May you touch him in a mighty way. We thank you, Father, for the work that you've done in the lives of Ray Smedley and Chris Rembold. As they continue to recover, we ask that you would strengthen them for each day. And for the thyroid tumor in little 13-year-old Bailey, Father, we ask for medical wisdom in his treatment and complete healing. We thank you, Father, for the prayer warriors of this congregation and their faithfulness. May you watch over them continually. In all of these circumstances, Lord, we ask that you hear our prayer and extend your grace. We pray these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, our Creator, Redeemer, and our Sustainer. Amen.